welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your home, your sanctuary, much like a luxurious hotel suite. And with the times that we find ourselves, we're easing gradually out of restrictions and orders from governors and 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 leaders, but it is gradual and we still are staying home quite a bit more. And so I thought today's episode would be pertinent to what we are um, going through at the moment. And also as we look to a summer that may still involve travel plans, but maybe significantly adjusted travel plans, this is a way to make our homes, the place where we are at the most lately, truly welcoming and luxurious in simple little ideas and touches that we may not have thought about. Today's episode is a top episode from the first season of The Simple Sophisticate in 2015. It was actually the sixth most downloaded and listened to episode of that season. There was 52 episodes, 54 episodes, I think, actually. Um, So it just really was quite popular um, when it came out. Um, But before I get to that, I want to let you know that it's beginning next Monday, June 1st, there will be a brand new episode of this podcast with an interview with Oliver G from the Earful Tower. We're going to talk about about his new book. We're going to talk about Paris. We're going to talk about confinement. We actually talked to him the day after Paris was, I guess, out of confinement, which was a great conversation and so much more. And then the following weeks after that in June, it will be back to what we normally do, talking about what has piqued my attention, books that I've read that I'm inspired to share with you and break it down in a simply luxurious fashion. So I do hope you'll tune in. And I also want to thank everyone who stopped by this past week for the British Week, our second annual British Week. What a success. Oh my goodness. I know it far surpassed last year's and we will definitely have a third annual British Week. Um, So thank you if you were one of the many people who stopped by and said hello, entered a giveaway, simply read and enjoyed what was there. So thank you so much. I had so much fun putting it together. Enjoyed even more so hearing from all of you and the conversations you had. And um, it's just a great week. All the giveaways have been claimed. And um, I look forward to doing something very similar in August with our French week. The second full week in August is the Simply Luxurious Life's fifth annual French week. So let's get to the episode I want to share with you today. This is episode 45, How to Set Up Your Home Like Luxurious Travel Accommodations. Have a wonderful week. Welcome to the 45th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we're going to talk all about decor and more importantly, tying it in to how we can make our everyday all the more luxurious, comfortable, and relaxing. Because as we all know, whether we're returning home from work or returning home from our travels, we want to come home to a place that really embraces us kind of like a hug. And there are 10 ways that I'm going to talk to you about today that are not that expensive. Some of them are free and they really can make a tremendous difference. Before I get to those 10 ideas, a little hint as to what today's petite pleasure is. I had the opportunity to go to a fantastic exhibit while I was in New York City and it turned into a little bit more. So I'm going to share with you something that will bring that memory back to life to me and I think introduce you to a fantastic way to spend the evening. Curious? Stay tuned to the end of today's episode and you'll find out what I'm talking about. All right, let's get started on today's episode. 10 ways to set up your home like a luxurious travel accommodation. The gifts of travel, as you know, are plenty as we are experiencing new food, new customs, new knowledge, and everything in between. Our minds are, because of all this, perhaps unable to relax and settle into comfortable habits that we don't even have to think about because we're out there and not sure of who we're going to meet, what events will unfold, and therefore our minds, our energy 
can be depleted a little more quickly or frequently than we may have expected. However, we don't necessarily feel tired in the moment because our adrenaline is kicking in typically, and we are excited and curious to take in as much as possible in a trip that we have most likely been very eager to enjoy. As I mentioned in last week's podcast episode, part of the reason I select comfortable, spacious, and welcoming accommodations when I travel is due in large part to the restoration I need after being outside of the hotel or outside of the vacation rental, which has ultimately been an exhilarating experience, but also exhausting. During my recent trip to New York City and then to Seattle, I had the opportunity to stay in two entirely different setups. One, a luxurious hotel, and two, an actual apartment set in New York City. Both offered exactly what I was seeking, even though they were, by definition, quite different. They offered comfort, a sense of coming home, security, and that opportunity that I was seeking to be restored each time I returned home, or home, as we would call it on a vacation with air quotes. (laughs) Upon returning home, I began to realize that the details that complete the preferred luxurious living experience while traveling are quite simple and could easily transfer to our everyday living environment. So why not? Why not transfer these ideas that these luxurious accommodations choose and select to accommodate their customers? Why not bring those into our everyday life? Today, I'll explore 10 ways each of us can set up our homes, our everyday sanctuaries to offer the splendor of luxurious travel accommodations. So let's get into these. Number one, I absolutely love this one. This one is seemingly very, very simple, but oh my gosh, it struck a high note for me. All it is, is drinking water that is readily available. So the hotel that I stayed at in Seattle was the Hotel Ballard, and I was beyond impressed. I knew it was supposed to be nice, but it exceeded my expectations. And it was really the details that made the difference for me. So upon walking into the hotel room there in Seattle, rather than plastic water bottles uh, available for you to drink at no charge, they were simply there. They set up a simple chic tray with a glass bottle that had a stopper and it was filled with crisp water every single day, refilled, and two stemless wine glasses for drinking were set next to it. This is so simple, and yet it allowed the inhabitant to simply pour themselves a glass of water without walking out somewhere else or buying a bottle of water that, you know, is kind of travel-esque and that crinkly plastic, and you feel like you're kind of at home because you're actually drinking out of a glass. And I love this. I would wake up each morning drinking a glass of water. Before I went to bed, I'd drink a glass of water. And it was so something so simple and such a clean aesthetic. And I guess that's part of making it part of our home. We don't want something commercial in our home. We want it to feel like home. So these clear glass bottles that have the simple slip and slide stopper, and I'll provide links to it on today's show notes, very inexpensive way to bring a little luxury into our own homes each and every day. So number two, drinking water readily available. Number two is to lay out reading material for the next morning. So you may know if you follow me on Instagram that one of my more common Instagram pics is of my reading material that I am either currently reading at that moment or will be excitedly reading the next day on my weekend. I love, like a kid kind of waits for Santa Claus, I absolutely love knowing what I'm going to read the next day, whether it's the newspapers or whether it's my favorite monthly or weekly magazines. I love setting them out, whether it be on my dining room table, the chair in my bedroom, or a coffee table in the living room, having them all ready to go so I don't have to think about it in the morning because you're kind of groggy in the morning. And whether it's the weekend and I have tons of leisure time to read or the weekday when I have very brief amount of time, I've saved myself that precious time so that I can read and relax and kind of just get caught up on the day or be inspired by an article. So something very simple, lay out reading material for the next morning. Number three is make a bed like a pro. Don't you just love, I love that tight fit, very clean, 
iron, duvet, comforter, whatever it is that they have, the neatly stacked pillows. It just, ah, oh, maybe part of it's because someone else has made the bed, but you know, we all know that's a very simple thing to do, but it really is the look. It's that welcoming look when you walk into a bedroom. A few years ago here on the blog, as well as in the Simply Luxurious Life book, I demonstrated step-by-step how to make the hotel footfold with a flat sheet when making your bed that allows your toes not to feel like they're trapped. It's loose as you put your feet all the way to the end of the bed. I absolutely love this. And I want to add one little extra step. I'm switching up my pillows officially. You've heard it here. (laughs) I'm switching up my pillows and how I make my bed. I used to, so let me just give give you the, the before. I used to put my two Euro pillow shams against the headboard, so behind the standard pillows. And that's traditionally what you see. It's very, very standard, absolutely. But then, I mean, I have some good pillows, but there's a few that I still need to change out and they're kind of flat and it's like, oh, they don't look so great. And I needed to add some volume to my bed. And as I've been showing my house these last few months, it's been trying to sell it. I'm like, how can I make this just look great? And so I was perusing a bunch of decor magazines and I stumbled upon a few and it just caught my eye. It was something different too. And I'm always up for trying something different if it looks like something that's, it's something that speaks to me, I guess you could say. So here it is, without further ado. All it is, is that the Euro shams go in front. That's it. Very, very simple. Stack your two standard pillows behind each of your two Euro shams. And I put my standard pillows flat. I don't prop them up against the bed. And I'll provide pictures of all of this in today's show notes. And simply stack straight up and down your Euro pillows in front of them. And it just really adds some regalness, some fullness to the bed, because those pillows, especially if they're down Euro pillows, because oftentimes you're not going to sleep on them anyway, so you can buy down even if you're sensitive to that, they just look full plump and it just makes it so inviting. Now you could also put some small accent pillows in front of those Euro pillows or a long bolster pillow in front of that. That's something you often see in hotels as well, but absolutely can do that at your home. But that's my big thing. Bring the Euro pillows to the front. Huh, it's a different, it's a change. You never know. It's something I'm loving right now. So number three, make the bed like a pro. Number four is stock your house, your bathroom, or your bedroom with plush soft robes. The Hotel Ballard that I recently, or that I just talked about, offered Boca Terry bathrobes. And I will admit right now that one of the few nights that I was there, I fell asleep in my robe and it was lovely. It was that comfortable. Not every hotel, in my experience, they may look like beautiful robes, but they're not necessarily soft or they're too too warm if it's in the summertime. And these were just right because it was one of the hottest days in Seattle while, when I was there. And it was just, they were light, but they weren't too light. They were cozy like a hug. Anyway, I will provide links to those robes, but you can often buy the hotel robes if you like them right there at the hotel, or they can at least tell you where to get them. In fact, Hotel Ballard allows you to do that. Now, this is an interesting story. I was recently speaking to a friend who went to New York City and they stayed at the Plaza Hotel and they really wanted the bathrobes. And they went and they asked how much they were, just as I suggested, because you don't want to take those. You don't want them charged on your bill. That's no, just don't do it. Obviously, you can take the shampoos and stuff, but not the hotel robe. Anyway, Anyway, they, they then went and talked to the hotel staff and the hotel staff said that they actually take the hotel robes after each use and donate them. They definitely don't reuse them there at the hotel. And so they said, just take them. Now, granted, don't do this without asking, but I thought this was something very interesting. If you love something, ask about it, bring it home. If you find something that really feels comfortable against your skin or whatever it is, ask about it. They would be happy most of the time to help you out because you're ultimately promoting their their brand or their company if you are going to say to someone else, hey, yeah, I found out about this at the such and such hotel. Someone else is might going to say, oh, that hotel, and you get the idea. Just something, ask. If you like it, ask. And I would definitely add that little touch of having a plush soft robe in your house or two, however you want to do it. <laughs> Number five, stock up on luxurious lotions, soaps, and hair products. Molten Brown, as I've noticed lately, has been the brand of choice at the last few places I have stayed. And after having used them, I can understand why. However, there are many quality products that offer rich lotions and help your skin and hair look their best. So definitely just keep your eyes open and buy what, again, what feels best on your skin. 
Place them either in the shower, if it's shampoo and conditioner, or next to your bed for your hand lotion in the, in the evening before you go to bed, or on the counter in the bathroom. It's a simple gesture to yourself and a reminder to take care of your skin, but why not? Why not? All right, I've talked about the first five ways to set up your home like a luxurious travel accommodation. I'm going to take a quick one minute break and I'll see you on the other side with the remaining five. What interferes with your happiness is something preventing you from achieving your goals. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Connect in a safe and private online environment that is convenient and conducive to what you need. You can start communicating in under 24 hours, and it's not self-help. It is professional counseling. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapy therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. With licensed professionals who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, trauma, grief, anger, self-esteem, you will be able to find a counselor that best fits what you're looking for. And everything you share is confidential. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash simple. Join over 800,000 people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash simple, and you'll get 10% off your first month. Welcome back. Let's get right back into the remaining five ways to set up your home like luxurious travel accommodations. Number six, have trays available for eating in bed, outside, or anywhere else besides the table. A luxury to enjoy when staying in a hotel, I will admit this freely, especially if you're on a business trip and you return exhausted each day and you don't want to step back outside of your hotel because you're just ah, you just want to breathe and you don't really know the town you're in, you don't know where to go and you don't want to stress any more stress than necessary is ordering and enjoying room service. Do not feel guilty about this. Absolutely not. In fact, the Hotel Ballard Stoneburners is the restaurant that coordinates with the room service. It's right there. It's joined up with the hotel and they have a menu especially for the people staying at the hotel. And I ordered in more times than I would like to admit Okay, I had ordered it in a couple times. Anyway, but it was worth it. It was worth it. It saved me gas. It saved me time. I ate well because their food is delicious and healthy, organic and locally sourced. I highly recommend it. And their pizza I had one night was, oh my gosh, delicious. But anyway, that's the luxury of staying in a hotel every once in a while. But wait a second. Why is it so much fun? Let's try to translate that into our home life. No, I'm not saying go eat your dinner in bed. Absolutely not. But breakfast in bed? Absolutely. So pick up a tray, those unique trays you see at yard sales or consignment shops. Pick up the size and style that you want and have a few of them around the house so that when you want to have breakfast in bed on those special occasions or you want to have dinner, say, outside, or maybe you're going to sit somewhere else besides the dinner table, have a nice tray that just by itself is beautiful, but is also functional. One of my favorite trays is one that my mother has at her house when I go visit. And sometimes when I am eating alone with all the dogs, because I have my two and then they have their two and then we have, they have cats. And then anyway, you get to eat outside a lot at their house in the summertime and they live out in the country. And so you go out, sit on the patio and You just take in the country air and it's lovely, but you don't have enough hands to carry everything. And so she has lots of trays, but I have a designated one that is my favorite and I've taken many pictures of it. So you've probably seen it on my Instagram feed. I just put my plate and my glass and my napkin and my silverware and any of the other accoutrements that that meal needs. And I just head outside or maybe I'll head into the solarium, wherever it is. I love it. So just simple addition, not that expensive because you really do. You can pick them up at yard sales or consignment shops are not that expensive. 
Number six, have trays available for eating in bed, outside, or anywhere else besides the table. Number seven, have the coffee and tea service prepped and ready to enjoy. One of my everyday rituals, which we talk a lot about on the blog, is tea, and I have it in the morning and I have it in the evening. So if I'm staying in a vacation rental, I'm always hoping that there's a teapot on the stove immediately ready for me to boil water. And if I'm in a hotel, I at least am hoping for tea bags. I do bring my own a lot of the times, but just in case, it's nice to have them there and access then to boiling water, however that may work. So at our homes, if that's what we crave for our comfort, maybe it's coffee instead of tea, whatever it is, why not set up a sipping shelf? And I talked about this a few years ago, but what I mean, and I'll provide a link on the show notes to that post, but I can briefly go over it here, is to have a cupboard or a shelf already stocked with your favorite tea varietals or your coffee blends or coffee beans in your freezer and have your tea strainer and coffee cups, your favorite coffee mug or tea cup with a saucer, have them all ready to go. And once they're all ready to go, no matter how little time you have, you will always be able to enjoy. Number seven, have a coffee and tea service prepped and ready to enjoy. Number eight, have patience with the details of your home. Now, I've been talking a lot about my hotel in Seattle, but when I was in New York City, I had the opportunity to stay in an apartment. Now, it wasn't through Airbnb. It was a private residence. And I feel very fortunate to have stayed there. But one of the things of the many things that I noticed and fell in love with immediately at this apartment was that the resident had styled it precisely to their taste while still being very welcoming for guests. This is something that takes time. It doesn't happen immediately when you move in. It may happen quicker, Each time you move, because you have really tailored what you decorate with to who you are and you know how you like to live, whether it's a lamp that is chosen to sit atop your side table next to your favorite reading chair or an ottoman that's sized and situated in the precise location to rest one's feet after a weary day, or even the books on the shelves and the art that you hang on the wall, this takes time. Gradually, though, your home... Each home you live in will have just enough of you to feel like the most beckoning sanctuary to return to at the end of the day. So this one's more of a just take a breath. Everything's going to look great. It's just going to take time. Have patience when it comes to the details. Number nine, create a cook's kitchen. Now, you may not be someone who likes to cook in the kitchen, but I have a feeling many of you are just like me. And one thing that I have realized due to my upcoming move is that not many of the items in my kitchen shelves go unused. So I didn't have to edit anything out because, well, I'll admit it, two years ago, I did edit out. I edited out a lot and I sold a ton of it in a yard sale because I realized I'm not using these glasses. I'm not using these dishes. I don't use that tool. That's too many tools. It's taking too much space. So eventually when you get to that point where you have only the tools you need, it's, it's like heaven because you can cook, bake, chop anything that a recipe requires and have it right at your fingertips. Much like decorating a home, this too, creating a cook's k- kitchen or a baker's kitchen, I guess you could say, will take time. But when you're someone like me, for, for example, who likes to cook when I go out on vacation and stay in a vacation rental, when you step into a cook's kitchen while you're traveling, it's very much appreciated because you feel as though you are somewhat at home. Bring that to your own house. Whatever it is that you like to cook, get the best tools you can afford. Sell, give away the rest. Don't have too many things in your kitchen. You'll simplify, but you'll also be able to make the best food and prepare it in a way that is up to what the recipe expects, I guess you could say. So cultivate a cook's kitchen and have patience with that process. Last but not least, create a place to set your keys and purse. A must-have when it comes to buying a home for me anyway is there has to be a foyer that's large enough for at least a console table so that 
Keys can be placed there. Hooks can be made available for coats, handbags, and leashes. And there's enough space for quick removal of shoes. For functionality purposes, having such a space relieves the mind of having to remember necessary accoutrements that we need each time we step out the door. But a foyer that is adequately decorated also welcomes us home like an eager puppy, ready to greet us and take the burdens of the day literally off of our shoulders. We will always have the opportunity to learn and improve, refine and polish the lives we live. And while decor, such simple ways of doing and decorating may seem trivial, they actually can set a very powerful tone in our lives. Hotels and vacation rentals make a living by creating spaces that feel like home. And as we know, our homes are much more than a bed and a roof. It truly is all about the details. Details that aren't all that expensive when we take a closer look. I hope today that you've discovered perhaps a few tweaks and additions you can make to your own sanctuary to make it all the more inviting when you wake up in the morning or return home at the end of the day. And perhaps you too have experienced additional ideas from your travels, and I would love to hear what you have taken from those travels and brought back into your everyday life to make it all the more richer and more tailored to you. Please do share in the comments. I have a feeling I'm not the only one who wants to hear even more inspiration. If you are curious about the Hotel Ballard, I have included all sorts of pictures that I took and links to the hotel so you can take a closer look. Again, I highly recommend it. It's beautiful, lovely, and situated in a very quiet neighborhood in the Ballard district of Seattle off of the, about two blocks off of Lake Salmon absolutely recommend it. If you want any of the show notes for today's episode so far, feel free to go to the blog, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 45, and everything will be there as well as the Euro pillow example I was talking about earlier in the episode. Now we are going to jump to that petite pleasure that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. I'm going to take a brief break and I'll see you on the other side. This week's Petit Plaisir is something that I recently enjoyed this past Saturday evening. Some of you may note, as I shared on the blog this last week, that I had a yard sale on Saturday. And as you might imagine, I was exhausted. My help, that was wonderful, was also exhausted and had gone home. So it was just me and my dogs, and I was staying home. So I made myself some dinner and a simple little dessert, and I decided to watch The Woman in Gold, starring Helen Mirren and Ryan Reynolds. Knowing the backstory, having watched the documentary, The Rape of Europa, I'll provide links to that on today's show notes, I knew what the story was. I knew about the portrait of Adele Blackbauer. I knew who had stolen it, the Nazis. But I didn't really know much about Maria Altman, who is played by Helen Mirren in this film. And I was curious, to say the least. I was even more curious because in my trip to New York City, I had the opportunity to see Helen Mirren on stage in the audience. And doubly interesting, I stopped by the Noya Gallery on Fifth Street on the Upper East Side and actually saw the portrait of Adele Blockbauer in person. I will provide all the details to this gallery on today's show notes but I highly recommend you go to this gallery. It is a petite gallery compared to MoMA or the Met, but it is magnificent. It is dedicated to German and Austrian art from the early 20th century, and the president and now sole owner of the gallery is Ronald Lauder. So Estee Lauder, you're thinking of that family. The painting by Gustav Klimt, was painted or finished being painted in 1907. Interesting little backstory there. He actually started the painting in 1903 as a wedding gift to Adele's parents, but he was quite known for taking time on these pieces of art, and he did not finish it until 1907. 
Regardless, it is magnificent. And Adele Blockbauer is the aunt of Maria Altman, who is the focus of the story A Woman in Gold. Adele Blockbauer never had any children. And Maria idolized her aunt. Idolized her aunt. And she, in 1999, decided to fight to get the painting back in to her family. At that point, it had been displayed with great glory in Austria's gallery Belvedere. And it was very similar to the Mona Lisa, for example. They keep comparing it to that throughout the film. However, I will say this. It was funny. I was sharing with someone that I had seen this painting, The Woman in Gold. And they said, okay, so how big is it? And uh, they said, because, you know, you, you as a kid, you get the Mona Lisa all built up in your head and then you go see it and it's this small painting. And I was like, no, 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 you will not be disappointed. I have a few pictures of the actual gal. I did not take the pictures, by the way. You're not allowed to have cameras anywhere in that, ho- that uh, museum, that gallery. There was actually, you'll see how small the room is. There was actually three guards, I guess you could say, in that one room with that painting to ensure that you were not taking a picture and nobody was. It was a packed house, but nobody was taking it. And that was kind of nice, to be honest with you. But oh, how I wanted to show you guys how beautiful it was. It's magnificent. This portrait of Adele is stunning. It's large. It, the textures. It, and then now that we know the backstory even more after you watch the film and read the history... In a way, it really elevates that painting even more. Some more information on this painting. Her hand, the way she holds it, has always been something people have questioned. And at the exhibit, they explained that Adele actually had some kind of, I don't know if it was a deformity specifically, but she was very conscientious that's this particular hand and so she he had her hold it this way to hide that whatever it might have been specifically they didn't actually specify what it was now another thing to note is that Adele Blockbauer was the only woman to be the focal of two paintings by Gustav Klimt. Many people wonder, was there affection between the two? And no evidence of that ever occurred. In fact, the husband helped fund Gustav Klimt. He was a supporter of him tremendously. So there was no evidence that they ever, ever were involved. Um, Although people thought it was quite intriguing that she was the only woman who sat for him twice. Now, The painting was a battle to get back from Maria Altman. And this film starring Helen Mirren and Ryan Reynolds, who plays Randy Schoenberg, her lawyer, covers a handful of years. It starts in 1999. They sue Austria to get the painting, are denied. And then they take and file with the United States Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court doesn't hear their case until 2004, And they don't get the painting back officially until 2006. Immediately when they get it back, it is held in a gallery in Los Angeles until June 2006, when it is then bought by Ronald S. Lauder for $135 million. Now, it is an exhibit, an exclusive exhibit um, that started in May, and it runs through September 2015. However, that painting, Adele Blockbauer, one, because there are two paintings of her, the first one, and that is the one that's the woman in gold, is there permanently. So if you can't get to New York by September, do not be disappointed. It's still there. It's still going to be there. By their agreement, it is to be on public display at all times for the public to enjoy. The second Adele Blockbauer, if you're curious, which is not a woman in gold, but it is of Adele Blockbauer, that second sitting, is actually in MoMA. A private buyer bought it for $88 million back in 2006 as well. And they have given it to MoMA for a long-term loan. So you can check that out. I'll provide links to that on today's show notes. So the film takes you behind the scenes, lets you really get to know Maria Altman and the struggle to get this painting back. It is heartbreaking. It is inspiring. And it will be well worth two hours of your time. I highly recommend. 
You'll find a trailer of the film on today's show notes at the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 45, as well as links to the Noya gallery in New York city where the woman in gold or the portrait of Adele Blockbauer one is hung. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or anything that will give you insight into how to live simply luxuriously. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.